I did not enter into any possible measure on the tax side, but I emphasized the need for a tax reform, a comprehensive tax reform, the last having been made in the early 70s, last century, and since then a number of uh, changes have been introduced. So what I, I think uh, is really to be done is to try to harmonize and uh, recompose the uh, tax system, uh, discussing the relations between direct and indirect taxations, uh, taxation, uh, discussing what is done to subsidize the, the poor, but at the same time to have a strategy to reduce the tax evasion that is pretty strong with new technologies. And I emphasize the fact that taxes have to be labor friendly and uh, friendly to enterprises. You said earlier this month in a speech, I believe it was in Israel, that, quote, a credible strategy to reduce the burden of Italy's high public debt in the medium term can no longer be postponed. Today, you said the government needs a rigorous and credible strategy to reduce the debt to GDP ratio. Does such a credible, rigorous strategy exist today? Well, the uh, credibility uh, doesn't mean that it has to be reduced today. It means that you have to be credible in the ability to reduce the burden of the debt, that is the debt to GDP ratio in the medium term. Understood, but, but is, there, is there starting now? And uh, what is uh, to be done is to pro proceed on two parallel roads. The first is to be very careful on the indebtedness, on the deficit, on the uh, difference between uh, uh, expenditures and revenues. And, the sec and focusing the expenditures more to investment and uh, uh, a way to improve growth rather than to subsidies and transfers. And at the same time, you need, however, to increase the rate of growth of the economy. That is fundamental. In the last 20 years, Italy has grown 1% less than the average of the euro area for every single year. And this cannot be postponed. This is absolute necessity. But when the Bank of Italy says there needs to be a credible, rigorous strategy, the implication is there's not right now. Well, I think we, we have seen that uh, the uh, uncertainty that uh, has accompanied uh, measures on the fiscal side in the last uh, year or so have produced an increase in the uh, rate of interest that is paid on the public debt and in the differential between uh, interest rates in Italy and in other countries like Germany. It has increased in a single year of uh, about 1%, one, percent, one percentage point, and the differential is close to 300 basis points today on the 10-year government bonds. It's too high, and if the interest rate is higher than the rate of growth of the economy, you need the primary surplus. You need the revenues that have to be higher than expenditures net of interest and uh, this is the only country for which in Europe today is foreseen uh, a positive uh, differential between interest payments and uh, the rate of growth. It's also the only country where you see a very clear set of battle lines drawn between the capital city and policymakers and the European Commission in Brussels when it comes to budget and I want to ask you what does that kind of confrontation do to investor confidence in a country like Italy? Well, and what's the implication for the real economy? No, no, I understand. This is the issue. The issue is uh, basically we have uh, uh, somehow f negative effects on investment. The confidence not only of uh, the business sector but also households is, uh, is uh, going down. And it, the reason why investment is uh, somehow being postponed because it needs uh, a clear idea of what is going to take place in the, uh, from, from the going side, but also from the evolution of the world level. At the same time, uh, I'm, I think Italy has a number of strength, strong points of strength, which I emphasize. Mm. Uh, the level of debt is high in the public sector, but it is very low below many, most other countries in Europe in the household sector, below the uh, average uh, debt situation of the business sector. It has uh, a balanced net foreign position. It has experts that uh, 
uh, surpass uh, uh, imports by a relative margin. So it has the potential for using these resources to foster rate of growth. Let's pick up on that because I think it's a really interesting point that private versus public debt here, both households and businesses here, are way below the average across the Eurozone for indebtedness. Clearly the public debt is at the other end of the spectrum. What does it take, do you think, if external risks were to dissipate, what would it take domestically to encourage Italian businesses to invest in infrastructure, in projects, in new employees? Yeah. Uh, I think that you need to improve the climate for the business sector. That is, you have to reduce what, 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 what we, we call the impediments to uh, ma doing business. Uh, and in order to do that, you need to provide incentives on one side to go in the technological advanced mode, which we have missed. I would say on average for a decade and more than a decade and to provide an ability for single enterprises to grow because we have a large majority of enterprises that are still uh, very limited size and uh, which are specialized in not much advanced uh, sectors. So and this is the really, uh, 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 you call it an industrial policy, well this is an industrial policy that in Italy has to be fostered. You said earlier this month that you hoped the results of the European parliamentary elections would create an opportunity for reform efforts both here and across Europe to be reinvigorated. Do you think the results we saw in those elections create the space for that to happen? I, I think there is always a space. The problem it has to do with the willingness to, to go in that direction. What I pointed out today is that it is in our interest that we go together rather than in uh, uh, separate steps. And also that for Italy, uh, Europe is essential. I also think that uh, uh, Italy is essential for Europe. You saw, of course, earlier this week the ECB talking about global trade tensions as the greatest downside risk to the European economies. Italy is one of the European economies that's most exposed to trade tensions. And I wonder, do you think that policymakers here in Rome need to pay more attention to the trade threats coming out of Washington, D.C.? Well, first of all, I am in the council of the ECB and I agree with this evaluation, as I said today. I think that uh, certainly we have to pay attention. There is a risk that moving from a multilateral system to a system which basically is uh, founded on bilateral interactions uh, is a weakness. But if it has to be bilateral, it has to be with Europe, not with the single countries within Europe. And in Europe, we have to understand that Italy is exposed and Germany is even more exposed. And we have a substantial value chain within Europe which has to be maintained. So far, the high yields on Italy's sovereign debt had not necessarily transmitted all that aggressively into household borrowing costs. A little bit, but not a huge amount. Do you think that Italy is running out of time to prevent that transmission from taking place? Well, first of all, transmission is really uh, normally slow because if the banks have uh, a decent state of liquidity and uh, are uh, somehow emerging and behaving in a proper way from the crisis. So this is the reason why at the end these have not transmitted uh, except for very minimal amount. It is on in the process of whoever we are seeing uh, this transmission taking place. This is why really we have to work on uh, increasing confidence that reduces the rate uh, of interest uh, for government bonds and this is retransmitted while growth prospects increase. It is really, uh, uh, I wouldn't say a razor edge, but close to a razor edge. I have one final question for you. You began working here almost half a century ago. You've had stints away to do your PhD and to work at the OECD. There's a lot of criticism of the Banca d'Italia, not just recently, but it's become more public and more vocal recently. For those watching this interview, investors around the world, how important in your view is it for this institution to remain both independent and autonomous and as a sort of form of stability in an often unstable Italian economy? Well, uh, in Italy there is a lot of talk and um, 
somehow we do not really uh, understand uh, that uh, the Bank of Italy has not been attacked. There has been requests for understanding what were the problems in the banking sector, in a limited component of the banking sector, but uh, I don't think that Italy uh, has uh, the Italian public at large, nor the Italian institutions, and certainly not the President of the Republic, and uh, I, as far as I know, the Minister, Minister of Finance and so on, any, any uh, disbelief in the bank. The bank is autonomous, is independent. It, this does not mean that it is not accountable. We are accountable, and today, with the report, I somehow pronounce my final remarks to the annual report. We also produce, as it is requested by law, a, a report on the activities and the governance of the bank during the year for the parliament and for the government. So we are accountable and we are prepared, ready to somehow explain all our uh, acts in a large number of fields. Monetary policy, where I participate directly, supervision of banks, but also the insurance sector now, uh, and uh, payments, we run the payment system in Europe with the Bundesbank and we supervise the payment system and uh, as well in research we produce I think um, pretty decent uh, research as well as in all the self services that we provide to the society. So I think still, I think, think that the bank is a solid institution, so accountable and uh, I would say also respected. I said one more question, but I'm, I've got to ask you one final question to draw on your experience. You've been at this institution for such a long time. Based on the fact that you've been through so many different iterations of the economy in this country, how does the current set of circumstances, you've talked about 20 years of growth lagging behind the European average, how does the current set of circumstances for Italy compare in terms of the severity of the situation? Well, I wrote a book. The title of the book was Difficult Years, so it is difficult. This year is more difficult than before? Uh, this year is difficult, yes.